My name is Marshall Levesque, and I work with Dr. Arjun Raj in his systems biology lab at University of Pennsylvania in the bioengineering department. And I'm going to be telling you about a method we developed to perform single chromosome transcriptional profiling and how it helped us study the effects of chromosome structure on regulating gene expression. Our genomic DNA comes in segments called chromosomes. In a dividing cell, the DNA is condensed into these tube-like structures, but after division, they decondense in the newly formed nucleus and fill the space as separate territories. All chromosomes come as pairs, one from each parent. This organization is maintained in healthy cells, but changes to the number of chromosomes or rearrangements to their structure, known as translocations, are a hallmark of serious diseases like cancer. Here we're showing the genome of the HeLa cell line, a famous cervical cancer model. We can see there's a lot of aneuploidy, and different chromosomes have been cut and stitched together in new combinations. Our study focused on whether these global structural features of chromosomes have any effect on regulating gene expression. In the pulsatile process of transcription, when a gene turns on, one of the copies must be chosen. And in a cancer cell, this is coming from the normal or translocated version of the chromosome. Beyond the site of translocation, there's very little difference in sequence between these chromosomes, making it impossible to measure differences in the source of the RNA. In order to measure the source of transcription, we used a modified version of our RNA fish assay that uses short oligonucleotides, each fluorescently labeled, and tile the length of an RNA target. You can check out the 2008 Nature Methods paper from Raj et al. for more info on RNA fish. When probes are designed to target the exons of a gene, we see the mRNA filling up the cytoplasm of a cell and a nucleus mostly empty. But when we target the introns of a gene, introns are co-transcriptionally spliced and degraded, and the only signal you get is a bright spot in the nucleus that represents active transcription of that gene and its position in the nucleus. We call our assay ICEFISH, that stands for Intron Chromosomal Expression Fish. To assign the chromosomal source of gene activity, we need to label the rest of the chromosome. We are able to do this by targeting many genes on the same chromosome through a pseudo-coloring strategy. The tiled probes are alternated in two or three color combinations, and after taking our images in the five distinct fluorescent channels, we can do image processing and look for co-localization, and this produces the transcriptional profiles for each chromosome territory, each with a different subset of the 20 genes actively transcribing. The genes are depicted as spots colored by their genomic position on chromosome 19. When we apply the icefish assay to a HeLa cell line, the clusters of colored spots representing the chromosome territories recapitulate the HeLa karyotype. We see two intact chromosome 19s and the two derivatives 1319 and 619. So now when we see that a gene is on, we can assign its transcription to the normal or translocated copy of a chromosome. When you take these measurements for a number of cells, you collect transcriptional frequencies for each gene classified by their chromosome source. When we compare the transcriptional frequencies for genes belonging to the 1319 derivative, we saw an overall increase chromosome-wide. Some genes were up to five-fold more frequent in their transcription. This effect was seen over a 40 megabase region as well as across the translocation for genes on chromosome 13. This suggests that the translocated form of a chromosome has long-range regulatory effects that are not explained by the sequence changes from the translocation. But changes to transcriptional frequency due to translocations should not be a blanket expectation. When we looked at the chromosome 619 derivative, we saw that these genes showed no significant change in their transcriptional frequency. This chromosome-specific behavior led us to wonder what other ways is transcription regulated by the organization of genes along a chromosome. One idea we explored is on whether genes from the same chromosome are correlated in their transcriptional activity. For example genes A and B, the different scenarios include correlated expression, where genes A and B turn on and off together, anti-correlated expression, where when gene A is on, gene B is most likely off, and vice versa, and uncorrelated expression, where given that gene A is on, we can't predict anything about the expression of B. What's unique about the ICEFISH assay is that we can make these measurements on the single chromosome level, where two genes on the same chromosome would display a cis interaction, and two genes across chromosome copies display a trans interaction. We display this data as the likelihood of interaction for all the pairs of genes tested in the ICEFISH assay. In a primary fibroblast cell line, most gene pairs show no interaction at the cis level, but there was the exception of RPS19 and ZNF444, I showed a strong anti-correlated behavior, which again means when one gene is on, the other is off. One could postulate that this is the result of a transcription factor that when present turns one gene on and keeps the other off, 
but when we look at the trans level, what was a strong anti-correlated behavior at the cis level is now a mild positive correlation, thus ruling out the cause of this being a trans factor. What was most striking about this data is that these two genes are separated by 14 megabases along chromosome 19. This behavior was robust across biological replicates, as well as in the HeLa cell line on the normal copies of chromosome 19, where the cis level we saw a strong anti-correlation and lack of this behavior at the trans level. Consistent with its differences in transcriptional frequency, the translocated portion of chromosome 19 did not display this cis interaction. This suggests that the long-range cis interaction between RPS19 and ZNF444 has been disrupted by the translocation event or the resulting structure of the derivative chromosome. In summary, the technology in developing IceFish and the concepts about single chromosome transcriptional profiling will be important for understanding how chromosome structure influences gene expression. With that, I'd like to thank my advisor and co-author, Dr. Arjun Raj, all members of the Raj Lab, the Jennifer Morissette Cytogenetics Lab here at Penn, and BioSearch Technologies for providing a lot of the reagents, as well as our funding sources. And thank you for listening.